What's up? In today's video, I'm going to show you my method for creating these big head portrait style t-shirts that people keep sending me. Let's get it. So on the left side is the graphic I created for this tutorial. We're going to recreate that from a blank slate on the right side. So the first thing we'll need to do is grab this photo. So we'll jump out to the internet. I searched by images larger than two megapixels and I just searched Tyler the Creator. Now I don't know when Google made this change but you used to be able to just click a gear icon over on the right side, go to advanced settings and search by images larger than, than two megapixels or four megapixels or whatever you wanted to do but for some reason it's gone now and I don't know if that's just happening to me or if it's happening to other people, uh, but it's definitely gone. So what I ended up doing is just literally Googling Google advanced image search and then going to that page and bookmarking it because the page still exists. It's still an option. It's just like not available on the images section, which is super weird. So anyways, I found this image and initially I brought it right into uh, Photoshop, right click copy image brought it into my canvas and if this were like a, a smaller part of a larger design it would be great like this photo would be fine i'd probably like size it up a little bit but it would definitely work however since we're just using his head and we're like making it really huge this is not going to cut it like you could definitely try to use um, images from google um, and maybe you'll be successful like definitely give it a shot but what i ended up doing was getting rid of this photo and then I used upscale.org, which is essentially like an AI program that will upscale images so you can make them larger. It works really well. I've been using it for a few different projects. And I will say that as of now it's free, but the way that AI has been moving and honestly the few videos I've done on AI, every time I use a program and it's free within like six weeks, it's paid. So jump on this. There's definitely a chance that if you're watching this right now in the future, it could be paid, but as of now it's free. So I'm gonna take advantage of it. So I just downloaded it for desktop. And essentially how it works is you just grab, you know, any photo and definitely the higher resolution it is to begin with, the easier it is to upscale, but then you just drag it into the program. You have the option to double upscale or leave it unchecked and it's gonna show you how, like how large it's going to make it. So 5,600 by 5,600 is large, but if we can make it even larger, why not? So let's go up to uh, 22,400 pixels. Um, it's it's gonna be a really huge uh, image, but I think that's exactly what we need. So I'm just gonna click upscale and let it go to work. So now we've got this really huge image to work with. I'm gonna grab the rectangular marquee tool and just sort of make a selection around uh, Tyler's head, hit Command C and then jump back into our canvas and Command V to paste it in and it is ginormous. So I'm going to right click, convert to smart object and then I'm going to size the photo down. So we'll size it down like this and try to get it to the size that we see on the left side. So around there should work, a little bit smaller. Cool, okay. So from here, we are going to go to properties and we're just gonna use the remove background tool. So I'm going to right click first and rasterize the layer so that we can remove the background. You can't use this quick action unless it's a rasterized uh, layer. So we'll click remove background and that should get rid of pretty much everything we need. This black part right here, if you look on the left side, it's not there. I got rid of it. Like it is part of the hat, I'm pretty sure, but it just looks weird to me. So I'm going to go in here and just get rid of this. So I'm just gonna use the, uh, the lasso tool and just sort of cut around it like this. And then I'm just gonna fill that with black so that it gets rid of that area. And we might have to do it a little bit more. I'm just gonna use the brush and I'm just gonna brush in so I can get rid of that. Sorry, Tyler. So the next thing we need to do is zoom in here and get rid of his neck as well because we just pretty much have like his head in the final graphic. So I'm just gonna go in here again with, I, I just like using 
the polygonal lasso tool. I just find it very easy to use. If you want to use the regular lasso tool, if you want to use the magnetic lasso tool, like whatever floats your boat, it doesn't really matter. And I'm going to go a little bit faster than I normally would, but I'm just going to try to make this cut out as clean as possible. So we're just sort of clicking along here, trying to follow his jawline and up to the ear. And then we're just going to get rid of all of this by filling it with black as well. So edit, fill. All right, so now we've got a pretty clean cutout. I'm just gonna zoom in here and make sure that everything's good and part of his glasses are missing. So I'm going to also bring those back using the polygonal lasso tool. But this time we're going to change the foreground to white and do fill again. That way we can bring back some of the original image. I don't really see any other areas that we need to fix. So we can just get started on this colorizing process. So the first thing I'm gonna do is duplicate this layer twice because we're gonna use the full color image in two different ways. And then I just want the original that I can go back to at any time, right? So I'm going to first right click and convert this bottom layer to a smart object. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with this top layer as well. So I'm gonna keep one of them in the layer mask, the top two layers, I'm just gonna make smart objects. I think it's just gonna make things a lot easier. So the bottom layer is going to be the skin tone. So over here on the left side, you'll see it's basically just like a big blob of a color. So I'm gonna use the eyedropper tool and use that same color over here on the right side. So I'll just do a color overlay on this layer and I'll just change this to skin tone so we know what we're doing. Double click into this layer, color overlay, We'll use that sort of skin tone that we just grabbed. So now we've got that same skin tone blob that I was talking about from the left side over here on the right side. And believe it or not, I'm going to right click on this layer and convert it to a smart object again because we're going to be clipping colors to this layer and we're not gonna be able to do that if it's a full color photo with a color overlay on it. So we can bring back this layer here and I'm going to command U and bring up hue and saturation and just bring this saturation all the way down to negative 100. Um, you could add an adjustment layer and do it that way. I just prefer to do this. And so the next thing I'm going to do is change the blending mode of this layer to linear burn. And then right away, I'm going to add a new adjustment layer. So down at the bottom of your layers panel, you'll see create new fill or adjustment layer. Click that, go to levels, right click on this new levels layer and go to create clipping mask so that when we adjust the levels, it's only affecting this black and white photo, right? Next, I'm going to highlight this levels adjustment layer and go to window properties and that's gonna allow me to make some adjustments here. So really I'm just gonna eyeball this and try to you know, make sure that this has like a healthy amount of contrast, but it's not too much. I want it to sort of look like a sepia toned photo, sepia, sepia, whatever, but we're going to make some adjustments to this later on. So don't like go too overboard and try to make this perfect because you can always go back and make changes later. So now we're gonna go down to the skin tones layer and we're gonna add another layer above it, and that's where we're gonna paint in his eyes and the earring. So at the bottom of your layers panel, you'll see uh, like a little plus sign inside of a rectangle. Click that. I'm gonna rename this layer eyes and earring. Cool, and then I'm gonna zoom in and essentially just use uh, the paint brush. I'm gonna grab hard round brush and I'm gonna have the size at 20. I've got the hardness up at 100%. And then I'm gonna change the foreground to like a light gray color. You could use white, you could use light gray, you could use cream, whatever you wanna do. Definitely room for experimentation. Uh, and then I'm just gonna paint in his eyes. And you could use the lasso tool. We're actually gonna use that on the hat. Uh, you could use it here as well, but I'm feeling like Bob Ross right now. So I'm just gonna stick with painting. And I'm gonna go a little bit faster than I normally would, but you know, I'm gonna try to keep it as clean as possible. Okay, so we've got the eyes and the earring painted in. Now let's do the hat. So we'll make another layer. We'll rename this layer hat. And then I'm gonna make sure I use the exact same color of blue from the left side over here. I'm just gonna use the lasso tool, uh, the polygonal lasso tool to be clear. 
and just sort of cut around this area so that we can make his hat blue. And the one thing that I've seen with a lot of these graphics that are in this style is they'll make them like sort of like comical in the sense of they'll have like really bright colors being used and they'll completely change the colors of the original photo, uh, which I think is cool. It just makes it like more unique. So now that I've got this hat area uh, selected, I'll just go to edit, fill, and we'll fill that in. And then I need to grab both of these layers, right click and create clipping mask. So that's actually the reason why it was important that we made this into a blob versus keeping the color overlay. Because if this just, this just had a color overlay on it, we actually wouldn't be able to clip these to this layer. So this next step is really important. Please pay attention. Before we move on, I have to tell you about the GFX World online community. Our members range from t-shirt designers to clothing brand owners, print shops, everyone from seasoned pros to beginners just getting started. That means you can ask questions and get feedback or advice from industry professionals. You've got a couple options depending on how serious you want to take this. You can join the premium community, which gives you access to exclusive tutorials and design tools, the raw Photoshop design files from all of my new tutorials, as well as weekly calls with me and other designers where you can ask questions and get feedback directly. In the free community, you'll be able to interact with others and get access to a rotating list of freebies. There you'll also find my 101 course on the basics of t-shirt design in Photoshop. I hope I see you there. Now back to the tutorial. I'm going to rename this layer black white photo, and then I'm going to duplicate it and put it above the levels layer, okay? So Command J, we'll duplicate this out, then we'll move it above the levels, and then we'll have to right click and then create clipping masks so that it clips back to this black and white photo. So what are we doing with this black and white photo? The first thing we'll do is change it from linear burn to normal, then we'll go to filter, other, high pass. And this is essentially like a more professional way of highlighting the edges of a photo. So a version of this is sort of available in the filter gallery, but I've just always found that this works much better and just looks better overall. So I'm gonna change the radius to 50 pixels and click OK. And then immediately I'm going to change the blending mode to overlay. So that's going to give the photo this sort of slick, almost oily look uh, without using like the filter gallery, which is pretty dope. So let's rename this layer high pass. And then, like I said earlier, we can make more adjustments to the black and white photo. So we'll do that here because I am noticing on the left side, it's a little bit more blown out than it is on the right. So we'll move this toggle to the left. That's gonna blow out the image a bit more. You might have noticed there's more details in his hat on the left than there is on the right. So the way that I brought back those details was by going down to this hat layer, which is like what we use to color in the hat, right? And then I selected the magic wand tool and I just clicked that so that it selected that whole area of his hat. And then I went to the black and white photo layer and I just went to image adjustments, brightness contrast. Now you're gonna see that it's a little bit different just because it's I'm <laughs> I'm attempting this for a, a second time, um, but I just increased the the contrast. I made sure that use legacy was checked, increase the contrast, decrease the brightness, and that's gonna bring back more of the details from that hat. And you can just kind of play around with this until you get it to where you want it to be. I just want some like subtle details, so that looks good to me. So from here, let's get these light flares added. So I'll go up to the very top layer, that high pass layer. I'll create a new layer and I'll just rename it light flares right away. Next, I'll go up to my brushes and I'm going to select one of the options in my uh, bling brush set volume one. This is part of the bootleg t-shirt creator uh, pro kit. And so I'm just gonna grab one of these. I honestly don't remember which exact ones I used <laughs> on the left side, but I'm just gonna assume it was one of these bottom two. I'll change the foreground color to white, click here, and then I'll click on his earring here. And then I'm just gonna rotate it and then make it a little bit smaller and click here. And then I'll add another one and the last one right here. Cool. And what I'll sometimes do is actually go in here and if it's like a little too sharp, I'll go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur and just like blur it a little bit so it's not quite as sharp. Yeah, like that. 
cool. So now we'll just drop this autograph in here. So we'll jump back out to the internet. I just searched Tyler the Creator autograph. Wikipedia came through literally the first result. So we'll drag this to Photoshop and Command A, grab the canvas, Command C to copy. Back to our canvas, top layer, Command V. I'm gonna right click, convert to smart object. Then we'll size it down like this. Bring it over right about there. Cool. Then I'll do a color overlay of this pink. Now let's mock it up. I'm going to use the mockable plugin. So we'll jump into that. I want to use a Rue Porter blank. So I'll just search Rue Porter and we're going to use the Rue Porter Ultra Luxury T-shirt 2.0. Redownload download it, confirm, pop this open, close the mockable plugin and zoom out a little bit here. And then we'll go down to fabrics and I'm going to change this to white. Okay, then I'm gonna go up to textures, go down to the artwork layer, and then back to our design. And I'm just gonna take my whole artboard, right click and merge the group. Then Command A to grab the whole artboard, Command C to copy. Back to our uh, artwork layer here, I'll hit Command V to paste it in. Right click, convert to smart object. Then I'm gonna size it down, make sure it stays like nice and big on the t-shirt. Cool, that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to double click into this layer and I'm going to hold down the option key and I'm gonna split this toggle under blend if and I'm just gonna move it over to the left and that's just gonna help me like, I don't know, it just adds like some extra sauce. It just looks better mocked up this way. And one, let's say one, 63 sure cool this looks pretty fire i'm not gonna lie uh, from here we could hide the background layer and we could just save it out we could hide the drop shadows if we want we could add in a custom tag uh, whatever you want to do but if you want to save this out from here you just go to file export save for web and you'd save it as a png if you want to keep that transparent background save it as a jpeg and it'll have a white background but we are good to go if you learned anything in this video all that i ask is you take literally one second and hit that subscribe button it would truly mean everything i'll catch you in the next video peace